I think this is the biggest question that anyone can ask in science, more than time machines, more than time travel, more than 11 dimensions, and that is, how are we conscious? Now, we take consciousness for granted, but if you think about it, there's no little man or little woman inside your head to which you're reporting. So you can't carry on just passing the buck. Where does it stop? How are you having this experience that no one else can share, no one else can hack into firsthand? And somehow we take this for granted. And when we go to sleep, we know that we're going to give it up. And when we are anesthetized, we know that, again, it's going to be temporarily abolished. But for most of our waking time, we're conscious and we're then self-conscious as we get older. We can look ourselves in the mirror, recognize ourselves and be aware of our identity. And these everyday processes and phenomena that we take for granted are the most astonishing miracle of all because it all comes from the sludgy physical brain. You don't have consciousness floating out in the ether somewhere. You know, your brain's not a satellite dish. So what's really interesting for me is how neuroscience can really throw some insight into that. Now, the causal relationship of how the water is turned into wine, how this bump and grind of the brain cells translates into this inner subjective world that we find so ineffable, so hard to think about even, so hard to define. I think we have to suspend that question. And what we can do as neuroscientists is nonetheless look at what we call correlates of consciousness. That's to say, if you give someone something that modifies their consciousness or abolishes it, like anesthetic or morphine or hallucinogens, what is that doing to modify that experience? And we have made some progress in that, and it's something that in all humility I see as a correlate of consciousness. But I do like to ask sometimes, and this is what I ask and it keeps me awake at night, is what kind of what kind of answer would answer the question? If someone said to me they'd solved how the brain generated consciousness, what would I expect to see? A performing rat or a brain image or a, a formula? No, 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 and no. Yeah, and until we even know what kind of question, kind of answer that we're after, we can't get there. But I think the exciting thing is to at least look for these correlations, the things that match up with different types of consciousness. And um, the area I pursue is this notion that consciousness is like a dimmer switch. You, it's not all or none, but it grows as brains grow. And therefore, you as a person can have more consciousness at some times, more than other times. As we already know, that when you go to a mountain or a river, you raise your consciousness. Um, so we talk about, or deeper, deepen your consciousness, it doesn't really matter which way you go, as long as it is qualitatively more, so quantitatively more. So... Um, that's my third area of research. Um, so we have the very old, the very young, and then the human condition in the middle.